Sushi rice acidification is a really common specialized process in a lot of areas, especially here, the one that we see in North Carolina. And this acidification is really simple and it goes a really long way for a sushi business or a business that wants to acidify their rice. Now for the rice that's used for sushi, the ideal temperature to make sure the texture is right and the sushi can be rolled is between 70 and 90 degrees. Now that is right in the middle of the temperature danger zone. So the only option if an operator wants to keep that rice at 72 to 90, at least the only option without a specialized process is to use time as a public health control. So that can be used and a, a lot of businesses choose to use time as a public health control and throw away that rice every four hours. But acidification is an option that would allow a restaurant to make a giant batch of rice and use it all night long, use it all throughout the rush because with proper acidification, that would take the rice from a TCS food that needed temperature control to a non-TCS food that could be left out of temperature control for hours without causing any sort of uh, public health risk. Now we need to do this acidification and cooked rice is a TCS food, mainly concerned about bacillus cereus here. And so we're concerned about B. cereus because it can produce a toxin when left at um, temperatures above 70. And so again, that 70 to 90 degrees would be ideal temperature for that, that pathogen to grow, go out of its spore form, produce a toxin, and then cause serious concern from a public health perspective. So we're gonna walk through the steps of making sushi rice here. We're gonna show it with regular white sushi rice as well as with brown rice, cause that's something that we're seeing a lot more. And then take the pH and see what we end up with. So when making sushi rice, typically there is a brine composed of vinegar. Rice vinegar is, is often used, but other vinegar would be fine as long as it has a 5% acidity. A little bit of neutral cooking oil, and then some salt and some sugar. And so another reason why a restaurant might choose to acidify the rice is that this vinegar, salt, sugar mixture gives sushi rice that characteristic taste as well. So you're not just using this for a safety reason, this is also adding some flavor. And so there might be a business that is already doing this process. They're just gonna need to prove that the end product gets to a pH of below 4.2 so they can be exempt from that that um, time as a public health control or, or cold holding. So these ingredients are just gonna be heated gently, really just to get the salt and the sugar to dissolve. So once that brine, the vinegar solution is done and the rice is cooked, you add that liquid over the rice. I made enough here for the white rice and the brown rice. And then you add that liquid and you give it a stir and typically it's going to take about 15 to 30 minutes for that solution to fully penetrate the rice and so you're going to wait a little bit for that pH measurement to be taken and so we'll go ahead and give that one a stir and then here's the brown rice. Now we are doing white and brown rice for a couple different reasons. One, because brown rice is increasing in popularity. And two, what makes brown rice brown rice is that it still has that hole around the grain. And so that hole is um, a thicker cellulose coating that is a little harder for acid to penetrate. And it's, it isn't impossible. It's just one of those things that takes sometimes a little bit more time, sometimes a little bit different of a recipe. So we're gonna test both of those after a few minutes to see if we got the proper pH inside of that rice grain and then talk about what to do if that doesn't happen. So first we're gonna take the pH of the white rice. And so you're just gonna get a little bit of the sample. Here we're gonna use a mortar and pestle. You can also use a plastic bag if you want. And this is something that's a little bit easier sometimes for operators, just stick it in a plastic zip bag and mush it up with your fingers. And so we're going to mush up the rice. Now you don't wanna just, we're gonna add some water here, but you don't wanna just add water and rice and then take the pH measurement. And the reason for that is that if you just add a little bit of that distilled water to the rice, all you're doing is creating liquid from what is outside of the rice, not really getting a good measurement of how well that acid penetrated the rice grain. And that's really what we want. And that's why you need to kind of bust open all those rice grains to make sure that the acid actually got all the way through. 
All right, so we're getting to where we have a good pace. There's enough of them that have been bust open. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this distilled water. And one question that's pretty common with this is, will the distilled water change the pH reading? Are you diluting the pH? And yes and no. So yes, technically it is going to be diluting it a little bit, but you're not adding so much distilled water here that it's really gonna skew the pH reading in uh, the range that you're looking at. I might skew it in the thousandths or ten thousandths place, um, but that's not really what you're worried about in this particular setting. So now that you have a good slurry, it's time to take the pH measurement. And this particular meter has a guard, uh, but with how viscous the slurry is, it's just gonna be better to get an accurate read if we don't have that guard on. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. And then we're just going to turn the meter on and then stir it gently in that slurry, making sure you have enough to get all the way around that bulb and make sure you get an accurate read. And so it might take a second to get that meter to land on a pH, just moving it slowly. And this particular meter does give a little happy face whenever it's done. So we landed at a pH of 3.92, which is under 4.2, which is exactly where we want to be. So here we're going to take the pH of the brown rice and I made a slurry just like I did before. And so we're going to go ahead and stir it gently. All right, 4.15. So that is, we're going up to 4.16. That is below 4.2, but just barely. So this is kind of on the edge. So if this had read at 4.27 or something like that, then we would have needed to have a corrective action here. And that corrective action, since it's only been a few minutes since we acidified the rice, would be to just add a little bit more vinegar, stir it, let it sit for a little bit longer, and then take another pH reading.